There shall be in the Department of Finance a division of accounts, which shall consist of the chief accountant and such other officers and employees. Hello, my name is Phil Carr, and I am that chief accountant that I just referred to. The excerpt that I quoted is from the Metro Charter, section 8.105. The division of accounts, or finance operations as we refer to ourselves these days, was created when Metro was formed. And our responsibility, in a nutshell, is to oversee the accounting functions for Metro. The same paragraph of the charter that established our division outlines our primary functions. So to walk you through what we do, I'm going to continue with what the charter says. The chief accountant shall maintain a general accounting system and such cost accounting records as shall be required by the director of finance. When Metro was formed, those records may have consisted of a bunch of manual work papers. You may be familiar with QuickBooks or other personal accounting and financial products. What we use at Metro now is a similar concept, but our product is obviously much more robust and designed specifically for larger entities. The system that Metro currently uses is referred to as Enterprise One or E1. In terms of accounting systems, Enterprise means the whole of the organization, not just specific areas. So the intention is to have one system that will meet the majority of Metro's accounting and financial needs, and to have a system that is automated so that the different areas of the system talk to one another. I'm tossing out an accounting term here, but the general ledger, which is Metro's main financial record, is maintained in E1. And finance operations is responsible for the accuracy and integrity of all the information maintained in the general ledger. So back to the charter. The chief accountant shall maintain budgetary control records designed to prevent expenditures in excess of appropriations or allotments. In other words, we want to make sure that Metro is staying within budget. The accounting system I referred to, E1, is designed to assist with that. In the spring of each year, Metro Council approves a budget for the upcoming fiscal year. That budget is loaded into E1, and there are a few things going on to maintain that budgetary control. As purchase orders are issued, there is an automatic check for funding availability. Does the department have enough budget available to fulfill that obligation? If not, the appropriate parties are notified so that issue can be addressed. Additionally, the E1 system has several other reports and inquiries available that finance or departments can run as needed to make sure things are staying on track throughout the year. The next directive from the Charter says that the Chief Accountant shall prepare disbursement warrants and conduct a pre-audit to all claims on all funds, including payrolls, before payment and shall maintain a current audit control over cash receipts. So that statement encompasses several things, so I'm going to break it down into three areas. Accounts payable, payroll, and cash receipts. Disbursement warrants is old terminology, but it falls within the accounts payable area of finance operations. Metro pays a lot of vendors, and we process payments on a daily basis. And while there are some variables in the detail of how that happens, the basic process is this. An invoice is received from a vendor. A payment voucher is created in E1. There are various levels of approval on that voucher. Then once it's approved, a payment is generated. Sounds pretty simple, but obviously there's more to it than that. We have a lot of controls in place to make sure payments are valid, accurate, and timely. Keeping vendors paid is obviously an important function, so we put a lot of attention on maintaining the integrity of that process, and we have a great staff of individuals who make it all happen. Payroll is the next area mentioned in that charter statement. Metro's employees are its greatest asset, and making sure everyone gets paid correctly and on time is a priority. Between general government employees, school employees, and pensioners, we are processing at least one payroll every week regardless of snowstorms, flood, or whatever else comes up, we get the payrolls processed. Similar to accounts payable, there is a basic process. Payroll is entered in E1, payroll is approved, 
and then payments are generated. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Payroll is actually one of the more complex processes we manage. There are many variables in types of pay, pay cycles, salary versus hourly, work schedules. So it's a lot to keep up with, but we have a great staff that understands the importance of processing the payroll accurately and timely. The third area mentioned in that charter statement is cash receipts. We have many collection points in Metro, so the cash receipts process is more decentralized than some of our other processes. Whether it's an individual paying their property taxes or a citizen paying green fees at a golf course, there are procedures and controls to ascertain that everything is being collected, deposited, and recorded properly. All of the three areas I just talked about automatically feed transactions into our general ledger. Short and sweet, vendor and employee payments become expenditures, and cash receipts become revenues. Finally, the last sentence in the charter regarding the chief accountant says that, the chief accountant shall perform such other duties as may be assigned by ordinance or by the director of finance. Okay, that one is a little general, there are many special projects handled by finance operations, and as Metro has changed, as technology has changed, and as the world has changed, the nature of what we do is quite different than it was when the Charter was written. Also, Section 6.15 of the Metro Charter says, The Council shall provide annually for an independent audit of the accounts and other evidences of financial transactions of the Metropolitan Government and its every department, office, and agency. At the end of each fiscal year, Operations prepares the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR, which is the focus of the annual audit. The CAFR is Metro's financial statements. The CAFR actually contains a lot of useful information in addition to those financial statements. Now, just to give a couple of props to Metro, Metro continually receives a clean audit opinion. So what does that mean? Everything I've talked about, the accounting system, the financial processes, the controls in place, everything is working as it should be. And the information in our financial statements is accurate. Also, Metro submits its CAFR every year to a certification program sponsored by the Governmental Finance Officers Association. It's kind of like a peer review program where the quality of our CAFR is evaluated. And Metro has been awarded a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for over 30 consecutive years. There are many users of the information in our accounting system, including the Metropolitan Council, Metro departments and agencies, bondholders, the public, and employees. We exist to support them. We want to make sure they have accurate financial information. We want to make sure that our vendors and employees are paid so they can continue to provide services to our citizens. And we want to make sure that Metro is receiving all of its revenue to fund services and pay bondholders. I hope that gives you a little insight into finance operations. If you have any questions, please reach out to me or anyone else in operations. We will be glad to assist you. Thank you. Did you know that payroll processes over 20,000 employee payroll checks and 10,000 pension employee checks every month? Accounts Payable processes over 70,000 payments to vendors each year. These processes allow Metro government to provide the needed services to keep our departments and our city running smoothly.